So you're using Cap Rover, you wanna learn how to test your new integration, your new one-click app, that's great. That's awesome, I want more one-click apps in Cap Rover, I love the platform, and I'm probably going to continue making a content making content about it. That being said, I am going to test Supabase because I see that it's in the uh, pull request for the one-click apps and it needs some testing. So I figured I'd record it as I did this and that would give people who are maybe unfamiliar with how to test Cap Rover apps an idea of how it's done. So this is my development server. Um, and what I'm going to do is go to the very bottom of the one-click app page and go to this template. Now, uh, here's the, well, here's a pull request right here. Uh, they're adding Supabase and they have done all four, four of the five checks. There's one left, which is to test the template thoroughly. And this is how you do the testing. So you come to this one-click app, the template on the very bottom and you copy the raw contents of the file that you're using. So this is the Supabase one from the, the guy who submitted the pull request. Uh, and then we'll paste the contents in here. And that will then bring us to the like one click app screen that we can go through. Uh, so we'll call this Supabase, oops, Supabase, um, non-key, um, Supabase non-key. Okay, how do we do this? We are non-key, so we'll generate it here. We'll copy our JWT secret. Generate, okay, here's our secret. Okay, so we copy it here. I don't exactly know the Superbase side of things, I'm just kind of following along. So uh, we'll paste that in, and then the service key we need to generate. So we'll select service key, generate token, copy this one, and put this here. And they should be a little different. Um, Looks like they are. Studio version latest. This is gonna have to change because you can't submit an app with the latest tag, but just for testing, we'll leave it like that. Um, all right, I guess we'll just see. Go to UI allow list. Oh, well, we can wait for that later. Go to SMTP host. Um, hopefully the SMTP stuff is not necessary for testing right now. Postgres version. Um, Postgres version, that looks like it's up to date. Another thing, if you wanna do easy pull requests, one thing you can do is change the default uh, versions of, of databases like Postgres, MariaDB, MySQL. Uh, those can always be updated. Make sure you test them though, because it's possible that you might introduce a breaking change and we don't wanna have broken one-click apps in the repository. Um, okay, it looks like all the other things are filled in for us except for the SMTP stuff and then some optional arguments here. So we're gonna go ahead and deploy this and we'll see what happens. Now Superbase has a lot of different things that it's connecting together. So most of them won't take this many steps to go through. Um, but yeah, I guess in the meantime, <clears throat> I know I haven't posted in a while as this is loading. Uh, if you're watching, you don't care about this stuff, just like look at my screen, like when you are scanning the YouTube video, just skip ahead. But anyways, um, I've graduated from Northwestern, so I'm no longer in college. Uh, I would like to get back to making more YouTube videos, but I'm pretty booked in terms of my time. I've got a lot going on. I do have some pretty cool ideas of some um, valuable content. Uh, specifically, I've been thinking a lot about how to grow, like from a technical perspective, um, a new web app or website. Um, specifically, like how, how you could set things up in such a way that people who are not technical would still be able to interact with this stuff. Um, so for example, just kind of in the back of my mind, I've been really hammering out like, like studying different CMSs and I think I've come to a pretty solid setup for that. So expect some, some content soon about content management systems. Um, there is jamstack.org. Uh, they have this, this collection of headless CMSs and I feel like I've basically gone through anyone that's worth looking at. Um, don't use Strapi. I think Strapi is a scam. They just have good marketing. There are better CMSs. I really like Directus and I really like Keystone. I'm interested to see where Keystone goes. I really like that it's it can be hosted on some of the popular Jamstack, Jamstack platforms. And Directus can also be hosted in a serverless environment with Cloud Run. This is a really cool setup, but also not ideal for every situation. Uh, and this is one of the things specifically that I plan on making more content about. Um, also, if you need help integrating Directus, uh, 
a friend and I are working on getting all this set up, uh, you can reach out to us at prov99.com. Um, and we will help you get your business or website or whatever you're trying to scale up, up and running in an efficient and also scalable manner. Um, I guess it's still loading, so I'll explain a little bit more. Um, basically, the biggest problem we're having with Directus in a cloud run environment is the cold starts. And I know this is something Ben Awad has complained about a lot, so uh, I guess he was right. I tried everything I could to make serverless make sense. Um, and there's CockroachDB, which is, I think is a pretty cool option. Um, but so, and CockroachDB works with. Um, Directus. So Directus is basically perfect, except for the fact that if you're running a cloud run, uh, cold starts are terrible. And if you're using uh, server side rendering with like Netlify, for example, it will actually take too long that the rendering will time out and you'll send back uh, just an, an error to your clients, which that is obviously not ideal. And this is why you should start with a VPS. And then when you're ready, that you know, you'll be consistently getting traffic, then you can uh, switch to cloud run. And that, that's good because it'll scale infinitely for you, which obviously like if you want to minimize your human human um, investment and like not have to hire more people than necessary, that's a pretty decent uh, option. Um, wow, this really is taking a long time. Hopefully, so sometimes if a container takes long to deploy, then it will throw an error even though everything is working out correctly. So this is something we want to avoid if at all possible. And I actually submitted a pull request earlier today um, for Mastodon because, uh, so let's see right here. I submitted this pull request and um, the reason I, so I, I updated a version for something. I think it was like the database. Again, that's like an easy pull request to get. But also the way that they were going is they had Mastodon deploying first and I was sometimes running into a situation where that would time out, causing all the other containers not to deploy. Even though it was still fine, it just takes a really long time to deploy, and that's why it was timing out. Um, so anyways, uh, see, there we go. The rest of the script isn't gonna run now because this one timed out, um, unfortunately. So let's see, if I go back and try again, I wonder if I just, do I have everything saved? Oh no, it doesn't. Um, Superbase and non-key. This is going to be a different one, isn't it? Our secret. Ah, oh, shoot, this isn't going to work. Okay, so what we want to do then is we're going to want to move. Which one do we fail at? Um, we're going to want to move whichever one that was to the end. And this isn't working now. Okay, we'll click apps. Let's go to the very bottom. Uh, we'll paste this in here, but then let's see. We'll make this bigger. It was a real time. I think it was real time, wasn't it? So this one we will get rid of here and we'll paste it down at the bottom. These deploy in the order that they're written. Um, so because of that, this one should deploy last. And if it does time out, it's deploying last. So it'll keep deploying and it won't have stopped the others from going, uh, which is what we want. And we want Superbase, just SB because I already use Superbase. Um, we're gonna copy the JWT secret and we'll generate our non-key again. And that goes here. And our service key, that goes here. And this is all good. We don't need to do go true right now, or at least I really hope we don't need to and we're gonna deploy this. And now this is gonna run again. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. I think this time I'm actually going to stop the recording and start it once it's done. Well, unfortunately, it's still not working. Um, I ran into another problem, Superbase storage took too long to deploy. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead of debugging it right now, because this might be a little bit over my head for the time being, is just leave a comment here with an image sort of showing what's going on and that it got a 500 error. And then I also left a comment a little bit before um, sort of describing what the problem was. Um, it's probably uncouth to leave two comments instead of one. Actually, I might be able to just make this one. If I go like that and I say, edit, edit, and I'll paste it here, and preview, okay. Yeah, so there we go. Now we just have one comment, it's edited. 
I'm just going to leave this here uh, for the people who are working on this. And then hopefully it also revitalizes the pull request because it would be cool to get Superbase in here. And I'm just, I'm not going to figure this all out on my own right now, but maybe someone else has the time to figure out a solution to this. Um, that's the beauty of open source. Contribute where you can. Um, and yeah, this is unsuccessful a little bit, but hopefully it showed you how you can test your, uh, your own one click app. Um, and by using the template and whatnot down here. Um, yeah, so that should maybe be a little bit helpful. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Um, if you think you have a solution to this, please go check out the one-click app repository or the actual server repository. Uh, like I said, I really like CapRover. I think it's a good platform if you are looking to get into self-hosting or you want sort of a simple, uh, sort of roughly Heroku experience. I actually haven't used Heroku, uh, but their pricing is pretty aggressive. So if you can host with CapRover, it's a, it's a cost or a, yeah, cost-efficient way, cost sensitive way to actually launch your website or whatever you're trying to get going. Um, yeah, so I'm going to leave that there for now. Thank you for watching, and I, I hope to be posting more shortly, so stick around. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you feel like it, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.